many inefficiencies in terms of um, the process. So those inefficiencies were attacked through lean construction, but then also when the processes were stabilized, um, the next step is to digitalize them. And there is always a acceptance problem when you try to implement a software in construction projects. Artificial intelligence is a very good technology that can help a lot, but in the context of construction, this technology helps mostly architects, engineers, and people in higher hierarchies, which uh, work mostly with computers and they can profit from the automation or optimization of their processes, digital processes. The real challenge is on site. The people on site work mostly with analog processes and when you try to introduce them this kind of technology the same happens so they reject it they are not interested to use it and it's their not fault it's just because the processes are built in an analog way so the first step is to digitalize and then to use these more advanced technologies with ai we were trying to extract the data from these paper-based uh, invoices, for example, and to digitalize them. The problem was that uh, the, um, the people on site was uh, rejecting to use a, a new kind of app to do that. And that's why it was very important for us because we realized, okay, we don't need to pavement a new way, a new road. We can pavement the, the road that they are already using. We realize AI is the second step. Firstly, you need to digitalize and structure the information. Okay. So we created balloon in order to gather the information from the chat. So balloon is collecting the information, organizing it and presenting it ready to use to the person who needs this information. Welcome to the Platform Pioneers, a show about the bright minds behind the world's largest digital platforms and the stories of how they built them. I am your host, Kuros, and together we'll uncover the secrets behind creating, scaling, and managing some of the most successful platforms out there. Welcome back, everyone, um, to another episode of Platform Pioneers. Uh, today, um, I'm really excited. I'm talking to uh, Diego, who's the co-founder of uh, Valoon. Loon is an intuitive all-in-one solution for communication, control, documentation of all kinds of projects, specifically um, construction projects. Um, it increases efficiency uh, on both sides, uh, on-site and in the office. But maybe without further ado, um, Diego, maybe could you introduce yourself? Give us a bit of a brief overview of your journey uh, prior to Loon and, and how you kind of like came up with that idea. Sure. Thank you very much, firstly, for your invitation, Sirich. Yes. Um... Well, my journey started um, in, in Chile and from there, when I was studied civil engineering at the University of Chile and um, in my master thesis, I had to improve a software, a software dedicating to manage construction projects. So after this uh, thesis, I was promoted by the company who was developing this software to be the product manager. So I was able to implement these um, improvements in this software. And then also I was uh, working as consultant in Lean Construction for that company too. And this gave me the opportunity to, to uh, see with my own eyes the challenges that are happening in construction projects. For example, the lack of digitalization. And, and maybe what, what are these challenges kind of like, like what, what did you see firsthand? Yes, many inefficiencies in terms of um, the process. So those inefficiencies were attacked through lean construction, but then also when the processes were stabilized, um, the next step is to digitalize them. And there is always a acceptance problem when you try to implement a software in construction projects. So the people on site uh, 
don't want to use software. They want to build and not uh, input data in any kind of app or, or software. And um, kind of like uh, maybe walk us a bit through um, the, the specifics of, uh, kind of, like of your time at university um, and kind of like how, how it led to actually uh, uh, founding that, that, that company, Balloon, um, uh, that you have done so far. Yeah. Afterwards, um, I moved to Germany. I continued working in, in consulting. And then in 2020, I started at KIT, Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. And then we were working in our research projects. At that time, it was the biggest research projects on topic implementing artificial intelligence in construction in Germany. So we were a huge consortium of technology companies from one side and in the other hand, many construction companies and all of these companies were trying to realize or to figure out how to use artificial intelligence in their processes. So uh, this project was three and a half years long. Um, so we could experiment a lot. We tried many frameworks, many contexts of construction projects, and we realized something similar that I already saw in Chile in the implementation of software. And it was that artificial intelligence is a very good technology that can help a lot. But in the context of construction, this technology helped mostly architects, engineers, and people in higher hierarchies, which uh, work mostly with computers and they can profit from the automation or optimization of their processes, digital processes. But the real challenge is on site. The people on site work mostly with analog processes. And when you try to introduce them, this kind of technology, the same happens. So they reject it. They are not interested to use it. And it's their not fault. It's just because the processes are built in an analog way. So the first step is to digitalize and then to use these more advanced technologies. And, and, and maybe uh, because that is an extremely uh, interesting uh, approach of, uh, of AI, maybe to make it a bit, uh, a bit tangible, a construction site, a construction project, like, like what were these one, two, three very added up processes that you, that you observed and, and how can, can AI help to make it more efficient? Because we've, we've talked on this program a lot about AI. We have seen uh, using yeah. AI in marketplace constructions, in, in vertical mm -hmm. SaaS, SaaS constructions. We'd be very curious to hear kind of like um, how it can, um, how from a research perspective, like, like the, the first ideas came, um, came to fruition on, on, on how to apply it to a frontline worker, so to speak. Yeah, I can give you a good example. In Germany, there are, and also in, in the whole world, there are still many papier-based processes. For example, on construction projects, they receive materials, they receive the printed invoice, and people on site need to take a photo of this invoice and send it to the central, yeah, or to the headquarters, for example, or to storage it in paper form. So with AI, we were trying to extract the data from these paper-based uh, invoices, for example, and to digitalize them. So that was one of our prototypes. The problem was that uh, the, um, the people on site was uh, rejecting to use a, a new kind of app to do that. They were using just WhatsApp, for example, to take the photo and send it to their managers. And that is very uh, in the corner store uh, stone of our development because we realized that they are not willing to to use no software. They are they are actually using one, and it is WhatsApp and the messengers. They they so, so like like they, they don't want to install yet another app. They don't want to use yet another app to kind of like uh, communicate 
take pictures, etc. So to speak, because in their in their mind they have an, a universal app already with WhatsApp. That's right, because they already have something, they already use something, and they don't want to shift to another app. And mostly because they need, they work not just in one project. In their career, they change in many projects. Sometimes they work also in parallel projects at the same time. And if they would have to download a new app for every project, they that would be a, a, a huge waste of time. That's why they said, hey, we already have a solution. We already do this in this way. It's digital. Please don't change that. And that's why it was very important for us because we realized, okay, we don't need to, uh, to pavement a new way, a new road. We can pavement the, the road that they are already using. So they took this idea and we said, okay, we should formalize the use of WhatsApp on construction sites. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's incredibly smart because you're kind of like um, erasing a bit in adoption uh, risk uh, already because people are using already the uh, part of, or large part of the, of the UX that, that's, uh, that's going to then try to, to, to increase efficiency. Yes. Taking, taking that example... Um, a construction worker, uh, I don't know, having a, uh, a purchase order or like a, a, a quality statement, a statement of work or whatever, uh, taking the picture. How, how, how is AI coming into play um, at uh, taking a picture and sending it? How, how, how is AI going to kind of like uh, increase efficiency on that process? Well, we are not using AI directly in this process. Yeah because we realize AI is the second step. Firstly, you need to digitalize and structure the information, okay? So we created Balloon in order to gather the information from the chat in WhatsApp. Balloon interact with the workers on site as a digital agent, a chatbot, and it organizes information from the chat. So with Balloon, you don't need to create a, a group in where 15 people is talking and sending pictures, and then some one of them needs to download everything in the office. Balloon is doing that for him. So Balloon is collecting information, organizing it, and presenting it ready to use to the person who needs this information. So it's kind of like an, um, uh, bringing if, um, efficiency and probably traceability and case management of an event uh, where you would use WhatsApp in a, in a, in a workplace, uh, so to speak. That's right. That's right. Actually, uh, our approach is to separate the topics in chat and convert, and convert them into tickets. Mm -hmm. So a ticket has a start and an end, has a creator and a responsible to process this ticket, yeah, uh, to solve a problem, to process an invoice, a, re a material request, etc. You can uh, define a deadline for that topic. And so the information from the chat now is structured in many tickets, so you don't need to make archaeology in your chat history if you need information from the last month, you already have everything in Balloon in like a table in a list of tickets and you can consult that information anytime just using filters, using a search engine and that's it. In a couple of seconds, you have the information classified and ready to use. Uh, very interesting, kind of like uh, uh, as, a, as a core feature. Um... Once you kind of like like put together as a as a B two B platform, like like what other features uh, did you feel were were necessary to be a kind of like relevant feature set for um, for front end workers, so to speak, a construction worker to use, or was that already sufficient? Like like how do you yeah. think about um, about the go to market, about uh, the parties using it, the features necessary? Yeah, I would say another big problem we, that we saw on construction project during this research project um, was 
the language barrier. In Europe, the construction projects are like the modern Babel towers. <laughs> yeah, the construction workers speak many different languages and they, when they need to communicate, yeah, sometimes they can in, in German or in English and that implies a huge challenge. So that is also a key feature of Balloon. We translate the messages from the workers in the given language that you want. They can interact with this chatbot in any language. They can translate the chatbot interactions into their mother language. They can write the issues in the chatbot in their language and they are translated into German, English or the, the language of the manager, user, and so they can communicate in real time. Gotcha. And I, and I think this is something where AI, it kind of like the language capabilities of AI also helped, uh, helped tremendously. Um, if you kind of, have, and, and, and that's maybe a, yeah. a good point in time to, uh, to switch to um, kind of like the, the next phase. Uh, if you think about um, the go-to market of such an innovative, uh, uh, innovative tool, kind of like an enablement tool, a, a communication tool. Mm -hmm. um, what are and were the challenges kind of like, like uh, and what type of first customers uh, did you gather? Like, like where were the pain points? So uh, the biggest, so to speak in your, in your uh, target persona that they used it directly. Like, was it uh, very large companies? Uh, was yeah. it, um, uh, were it like, like very complex project? Like, like would be curious to, to see like, like who are the first uh, users and how did you think about the go to market? Yeah, we are targeting like mid-sized to larger construction companies. Um, we realized that the most companies having troubles with digitalization are the, the small and mid-sized, yeah, because the larger companies, they have resources and they have uh, organizational structures to digitalize them. But the mid and small size they are struggling with that. And that's why they are always, they are um, actually using, for example, WhatsApp to communicate. They're using Excel to, to create uh, their, their tables of issues or a contact list or reporting, etc. And that kind of processes can we support very efficiently with a balloon. And that's why um, in the first uh, step, these are our um, target groups. So these are the kind of companies that we can help the most, but also we can also uh, help the larger ones. This is a, there is a, a very um, interesting study made here in Germany by InfoConsult, and they realized that 72% of construction sites in Germany are using WhatsApp for communication, hmm. and it's a high number for Germany. I would I would almost say, which is notoriously yes. uh, undigital. I would I would rather yeah. see that they have been using like paper, <laughs> uh, 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 um, kind of like pieces of paper or phone. Yes, and it's an impressive number. Also considering that in Germany the people is very aware of the data protection cons uh, issues, yeah. so this is, it's a huge number. And if, and they are using in more or less 55% for documentation. So they document progress, they document invoices in WhatsApp. So if you compare this kind of uh, a number with the current digital tools for construction, which have four to 3% of the market, 72% is huge. So WhatsApp is the most used construction tool in Germany. Um, and uh, kind of like, like looking at, at this target group, small to mid-size, small to mid-size is, is, is what, 50 people, 100 people, so, so, somewhere in that range, is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, even, even less. There are companies with 10 people and yeah. yeah. And, like um, when when you look and, and that's always a, a very important in, in a go to market kind of like what are they trying to achieve? What is the ROI 
uh, on a use case um, for them? Is it like uh, I want to boost um, audit auditability documentation? I want to boost efficiency by X percent. How, how how kind of like how are our owners and users thinking about about using such tool? I think um, they see the value in the time that they can save using our tool. I can give you a concrete example. A customer of us is installing fire protection equipment and they need to register every equipment who was installed. The process currently was they took a photo, they sent this photo with the quantity of this equipment and the location, a person received this photo in the office, needs to download and the photo and upload into an Excel and put quantity and location of the equipment. So this whole process took five minutes for every register. In a normal project in one year, they made 5,000 of these kind of informations registers with balloon we reduce this five minute to one minute so if you do the math um 5000 multiply four minutes in one year you can save 20000 minutes if you transform that into working days are more or less 41 days so with balloon you are saving two months of, of time mm -hmm. to a project manager. So that is the, the, the value that we are providing. So they can use this time for other activities which are not just sorting information because Balloon is sorting it for them. Correct, correct. And I mean, that's, that's a, significant, uh, a significant boost. If you kind of like um, think because uh, I would say construction, tradesmen, etc., have been in the past, I would say, two to three years, um, a really, uh, I would say, um, um, a, a target group for, for digitization. There have been a lot of uh, uh, new and of the companies, um, some starting more at the back office. Guys like you, they start directly at, at uh, project management construction. How do you foresee, and in discussion with your customers, um, additional features? Do you always want to stay, I would say, at the front line, at the project? Do you, do you see your guy, your, yourself moving um, more back office, kind of like the stored data, sorting it, putting it into, um, into project management tools, putting it then eventually mm -hmm. into um, uh, invoicing, um, mm -hmm. et cetera? It, it's how you, you name it. Like, like how, do you, uh, how, how do you vision kind of like uh, your go-to-market from yeah. there? Yeah, I would say right now, the focus is to digitalize the channel from on-site to the office because that is a less digitalized uh, channel, the communication channel. If we took a look into the future, the vision of Balloon yeah, is to offer a holistic solution. Yeah? Right now, we are collecting the information we are allowing to collect information better, quickly and structured. Uh, in a couple of years, our customers will have a lot of label information because they are going to send pictures with descriptions and categories. So this information can be used, for example, for K, uh, AI training and then can profit for that. And this kind of training to create an algorithm which understand the context of a, a customer is not going to be so useful for the people on, on site, but for the people in the management level will allow them to predict um, the and forecast construction progress and also to identify quickly elements in photos or in in um, how do you say and um, in the data itself so as i said firstly the focus is on the construct uh, on the workers on site long term 
we can also create a lot of value for the people at the management level. And also we want to connect Balloon to a bigger software like a, a SAP or Microsoft Dynamics for construction project, which manage not just issues from on-site, but from the whole company. So Balloon will be the link between on-site through communication and these bigger systems. Okay, and, and, and that uh, makes uh, makes fully sense kind of like to to become an really integrated centerpiece uh, of the work because obviously all of these uh, ERP systems, they are just a reflection of work. If you kind of like tackle the project itself, um, make right. use of the data of the documents that have been scanned and have been um, uh, right. photographed at some point, that's that's an even even stronger position. Uh, maybe a... a I ask question because you kind of like uh, know both worlds, you know, Germany, you know, um, uh, the European world, but you have also worked in, in South America. Does that play um, the adoption, the, the usability of tools? Um, uh, does it play um, a role how kind of like um, people and, and cultures are using WhatsApp, are, are prone to use uh, digital tools? And, and will that also impact, for example, your go-to-market? So, for example, will you, will you mm -hmm. want to try to go very... Uh, rapidly to, to South America because you see that you can have even a stronger edge there. Yeah, actually we have already customers in, in Chile. I activate my network and there and we can and, and we could acquire some customers mostly of the mining industry. So not just construction, but also other related industries. And yes, uh, culturally it's a little bit different I would say that um, in Chile, they use more WhatsApp and they are less con uh, concerned about uh, data protection issues. It, but it, it, it would be difficult to be more concerned than in Germany, but yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, still uh, here in Germany, there, there are also openness to use this tool. They, they realize that it's the way to go because WhatsApp and this kind of messenger, not just WhatsApp, we, we are going to connect this to Telegram, to Trima, to... Microsoft uh, Teams, etc. So mm -hmm. we are going to be multi-channel. These kind of tools um, already have won a lot because they are the preferred tool of the users. Users with 60 years old are using it normally. They are power users. They can send videos, uh, voice messages. Even my grandma can send me videos so correct um, yeah. we don't want we don't need to fight against this rejection the yeah. this lack of acceptance in software they already have it perfect um i mean and and, and it makes it makes total sense and uh, yeah we're all very very curious to see um uh, and, and to see you guys uh, take off uh, globally obviously we are we are now um, uh, at the end uh, of our time. First of all, uh, thank you so much for joining. I think it was uh, extremely interesting, kind of like to have a a project uh, that was kind of like born in in research um, and and then applied from a very um, high tech view to something very concrete, which is kind of like enabling uh, construction projects and and kind of like the worker on site. Uh, thank you so much for for joining me. Um, um, extremely valuable insights and uh, yeah, best of luck. Thank you very much again for the invitation and yeah, happy to, to share some insights of Balloon.